what's the next process besides getting original documents um, to, to verify income? What else do you do? Well, what the other documents we're, we're looking for is we tap into a national eviction database. We tap into um, uh, TransUnion for the full credit report, not just a summary or cursory overview. Because one of the one of the lessons learned a long time ago is even if a tenant has a bruised credit, they could still be an excellent tenant for you with a, a moderate risk profile if you can piece together what happened and find out what their story is. Uh, for example, a lot of times we'll have tenants who have gone through a divorce or going through a divorce, and that typically wreaks havoc on them, or a medical situation like cancer or a job loss. If you can see a pattern that existed before that life incident occurred, and then see a pattern after it resolved itself, then that means their value system or that tenant's behavioral pattern is not uh, is not going to be repeated typically. So you can make a case that they fall into a better risk category, a better risk profile, after reviewing the entire credit report. And that's why we pull the full credit bureau. We don't just pull summary. Um, the other documents we also pull is sex offender background, all 50 states, criminal background, all 50 states, and OFAC, which is Office of Six, uh, Foreign Asset Control. Um, and that one will light your hair on fire when you get a hit back on that, because if, if you don't know what OFAC means, that's pretty much the federal government's terrorism database. <laughs> and unfortunately, we've had some people show up on that. Um, so it's uh, you've got to know who you're putting in your property, whether you're doing this as a landlord, as a property manager for someone else, or especially for yourself. You have to do your due diligence. Dan, do you have a, a rent criteria uh, for properties that vary on a property by property basis? Sure. Absolutely. The first, uh, let me go through the the mandatory criteria that is universal for all our properties, Matt, because that's going to uh, probably be most beneficial because obviously the listeners on this call are going to have some properties at different price points and some properties that are uh, more risk tolerant or less risk tolerant. One of the universal proper, one of the universal characteristics of our criteria is income. It's mandatory that our tenants have a three to one ratio of gross monthly wages to rent price. So in other words, if the rent is $1,000 a month, they have to have household income of at least three times that, which is $3,000 a month gross wages. If they don't, what our experience has shown is that there's not enough net payroll after taxes, 401K, insurance, groceries, utilities, and they get in the bind. But a three-to-one ratio minimum is pretty solid. The second is no felonies, zero. If it's a felony conviction, uh, we don't take them. Uh, obviously, OFAC is a no-brainer, no, absolutely none on that. Sex offenders, a no-brainer, absolutely no incidents on that. Um, going for credit scores a little bit uh, tougher, the way our software, we use a, a software service called National Tenant Network, and we have since we started years ago. Um, John Spafford here in Indianapolis runs that, uh, runs that organization, and it's extremely well done very, very well done reports. We've built into our algorithm for that report system two major differences. Here's an example as it relates to credit, Matt. We treat Chapter 7s and Chapter 13s differently. And so if somebody has a Chapter 7 on their, on their credit score, which, as you know, is a full discharge of all liabilities, basically wipe the slate clean, they get hit hard on their scoring, and we use a scoring system of 0 to 100, 100 being great, just like in grade school. So 90 plus is an A, 80 plus is a B. If they have a Chapter 13, however, they don't lose as many points for that. And because the difference to Chapter 13 is a payback schedule, so the tenants, the, the tenants, the borrowers, didn't try to really keel haul uh, their creditors, and they are attempting to make a payback. So they won't lose as much points for that. One other uh, little bit of our algorithm is with medical collections. Um, if the medical collection is under, I want to say it's under $200 for a medical collection, we actually decrease the amount of points that they get taken away from their composite score, and that's simply because there's too many errors and too many delayed corrections on the credit bureaus with medical collections. Uh, the insurance industry and medical industry is just a mess. So we, we realize that's a threshold we set. And it's actually worked out excellent for us. So those are those are three quick ones that we take a look at on credit scores that are a little bit fuzzier, but we apply those universally to all our properties. 